Uh, our guest uh, by the Reverend Professor Dr. Miroslav Kainaski, Professor of the Catholic University of Lublin. I'd like to welcome all of you very warm heartedly, both those who are here as well as those who are online with us. And this is a very special event, especially when we take into consideration the latest year of the functioning of this uh, center of the Johann Joshua Herschel uh, Center operating uh, here for the last year. Uh, when uh, we had with us John Paul II, and since 1956 till 1978, uh, he worked here as full-time uh, worker. He directed uh, the chair of ethics at the Department of Philosophy. So when he came here on the 9th of uh, June uh, of 1987 in the main uh, hall of uh, uh, Wyszynski, he said, University, you have to serve the truth. If you serve the truth, you serve the people and the freedom of person and of the nation. That's why this event today related to the presentation and uh, promotion uh, of the book uh, by uh, Richard Tenford uh, together with uh, uh, Reverend uh, Zielinski, this is one of the aspects of the service that the university gives in different areas. I'd like to welcome all our guests here, both sitting here with us uh, in this podium as well as uh, in the room. I'd like to thank uh, Reverend Professor uh, Vrubel and Rizal Tralik, as well as Professor Mankowski who is with us uh, in the Institute of Yad Vashem. I'd like to thank the editorial of the Catholic University of uh, Lublin, the publishing uh, house who promotes uh, this book. There is the Academy of the Modern Media and Communication. And you can say that this is many, many years of uh, work. And it's the combination of those works that led to this publication. And soon, I'm sure we will hear about this uh, immense work, a uh, book that uh, was developed over tens of uh, years. And it's a new area regarding Poland during the Second World War and after the Second World War. It's a great moment. The book in the English will be able to reach any reader who would be interested in getting to know the testimonies of both uh, who were giving the rescue as well as those who were rescued. That's a very interesting because we've got both parties talking. And it's uh, difficult a bit, this uh, book, because uh, those testimonies were given in different languages in different times. So that was a major challenge especially for the uh, editor to uh, prepare it all in the English language, finally. So I'd like to thank everyone who will be transmitting our event. And it should be helping us to follow the truth, because as we read in the Bible, you need to seek the truth, because the truth shall set you free. Thank you. I'd like to thank you very much. I'd like to invite the representative uh, of Minister of Education and Science, uh, the Jakub Koper, who would the penitentiary of the Minister of Education and Science for Student Affairs, to read out a letter from the Minister of Education and Science. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the great honor to read the address directed at you prepared by uh, Professor Przemysław Czanek, the Minister of Education and, uh, and Science. Rescuing those condemned to non-existence, aid given to Jews by priests and nuns during the Holocaust in occupied Polish territory. Dear participants, your magnificence, uh, honorable uh, priests, at the speakers, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank you for inviting me to this very important uh, conference. However, I cannot take part due to the earlier obligations. I'd like to appreciate this honorable initiative of the representatives uh, 
of uh, the Abraham Heschel uh, Center of Jewish-Christian uh, relations and the fact that I organized this event. I'd like to say that uh, in this uh, circle of uh, historians and experts on Jewish uh, uh, Catholic relations in the Second World War is a very important issue. I'd like to uh, say that I'm very glad that uh, the event uh, is combined uh, with the discussion on the uh, uh, helping the Polish clergy to Jews during the Second War. I'm sure that today's debate, as the two-volume monograph uh, by Richard Tenderf, will have a major impact uh, on updating the state of research of this important topic, will become an inspiration for further scientific work, and first and foremost uh, will strengthen the dialogue and the ties that connect uh, Poles and uh, Jews. I'd like to congratulate you on this very valuable undertaking. I'd like to greet all the participants of the conference. I wish you satisfaction on all your actions and uh, uh, all kinds of um, good things that uh, you might have. Ladies and gentlemen, Let's move on to the first part of uh, our event. And here we will have a series of uh, presentations of experts, of professors uh, who are experts in this area. And the first person, first professor will be Lee Moriagil, a professor won her habilitation degree in the Institute de Tute Politique uh, in Paris uh, on the research leadership uh, at Sorbonne University. She was a researcher at Yad Vashem in Jerusalem and the advanced studies for Holocaust studies in Washington at, at the Sorbonne University. She, um, uh, Professor Lemoria Gil, has published several books on the history of France and the German occupation and on Jewish rescue and civil disobedience, among them the latest published last year. The Catholic also called the Juif son l'occupation. I'd like uh, the professor to take the floor and uh, talk about rescuing the Jewish citizens in uh, France between 1940 and 1944. Professor, the floor is yours. Well, hello to everybody, and want I be, I want to thanks to the rector, to direct, director of Eschel, and decided to invite me. It is a great honor for me, and uh, a great uh, pleasure to uh, present my research about France rescue by uh, Catholics, especially but Cato Catholics, and also with connection with the Vatican. According to most historians, about the character of the Jews in France were deported during the German occupation of World War II. And World War II. Uh, and an astounding 75% uh, seven, survived. This is mean 222 cents of Jews have survived the the, the occupation in France. This is in contrast to neighboring countries like the Netherlands with 18% deported and Belgium with 45% deported. Despite the fact that xenophobia and antisemitism had swept across France in the 30s and during the Vichy regime, French people had rescued Jews under German occupation. A large part of Jews' survival, according to my research, was due to the efforts also of bishops, priests, nuns, and lay Catholics. Approx approximately 85% uh, percent of the French population was Catholic in 1914. 
Under the new regime, the Catholic Church became a central player in the drama of public life, and Catholicism became the single most cohesive force in French society after German-defeated France. Rescue of Jews did not necessarily mean that Catholics became philosemites, but confrontation with the pain and suffering of Jews under gem German occupation and the publication of Vichy Vichy's anti-Semitic laws encourage many of them to disobey laws and take action to rescue Jews. We must also consider that most priests and bishops appreciated Vichy's support of Catholicism and its crusade against traditional enemies of the church, such as communists. The policy of the Catholic hierarchy in France was to respect the legal politic authority of Vichy, le pouvoir établi, but this respect doesn't mean total obedience. It is possible also in certain cases to obey self-conscience and not the hierarchy. This can explain the significant number of priests, nuns, and bishops engaged in rescue activities. According to my previous studies, more than 17 bishops out of 18 bishops in total had encouraged Jewish rescue operations throughout the placing of Jews in religious congregations, boarding schools, and free schools. They supported the initiative of priests and nuns in placing Jews with host family, escorted them to Switzerland or Spain, and equipping them with false papers and false baptism certificates. The bishops were fully aware of these life-saving activities, even as they pledged outward respect for the Vichy regime and its leader, Marshal Philippe Pétain, a national hero from World War I. Each bishop reacted differently, of course, according to his personal characteristics. There are no specific universal instructions for rescuing Jews in internal church publications. The res rescues and their ecclesiastical supporters customize their approach depending on their particular circumstance and local. It was a diverse but well-connected rescue network, made possible throughout a combination of courage, goodwill, and personal friendships. Also, some bishops did not always approve of the open resistance shown by certain priests towards the Vichy regime. They still encouraged private rescue of Jews. Faced with the violent persecution of Jews in summer 1942, six bishops and cardinals engaged in a series of public protests. Monseigneur Saliège in Toulouse, Monseigneur Théas, Mons Cardinal Gerlier in Lyon, Monseigneur Delay in Marseille, Monseigneur Moussaron in B, and Monseigneur Vansenberg in Bayonne. But more than 17 bishops from all over France have contributed to helping Jews. Rescue activities took many forms, including hiding people, helping them escape, and providing false identity, foods, and shelter. Those activities had to be carried out in great secrecy since there was extreme danger in being discovered. Rescues were, were caught sent to prisons and concentration camps where many perished. What is more important is that all the bishops had been in a close contact with uh, Pius XI and his secretary, the future Pius XII, and received money since 1939 to help refugees and especially Jews. They were involved in the creation of networks to rescue Jews in their diocese. This is how we, we can explain this important rescue of Jews in France. Also, among the bishops who were engaged in wartime rescue, many of them had been faithful to Vatican policy since the 1930s. Following the Vatican's condemnation of the Action Française, a far-right monarchist movement in 1926, a series of ma major changes took place. 
During the next decades, 39 bishops were replaced with 20 episcopal, episcopal appointments taking place in just the first few years bishop Valerio Valeris Nunciatur, July 1936 to 1931. Globally, we can say that we are willing to fight extreme nationalism, to oppose Nazism and racism, to develop Christian youth movements in every diocese, and combining with civic action and faith. Also, we can uh, remember the very important influence of the papal encyclic Midbrangerzog again racism that influenced very much the attitude of Catholics in France. And now to give you some example of bishops, uh, for example, the Diocese of Limoges, uh, where um, in this Diocese many clerics and religious people committed themselves in helping Jews. But the most important is Monsignor Astou, the bishop, publicly protested several times since 1941 to 1943 against the Vichy regime's desire to create a single youth movement following the example of fascist and totalitarian countries. Bishop Rastoui openly opposed the measures taken by the Vichy government against Jews. He found them barbaric and inhumane and above all contrary to the doctrine of charity and mutual aid of the Catholic Church. He condemned both this shameful trafficking and the abduction of Jewish children. Monsignor Astoui founded the local Christian friendship network that organized escape routes towards Switzerland in particular and saved many lives. He can do it because he enjoys real support from the Vatican and was not afraid of being dismissed by his superiors. He received financial help from the Vatican to help Spanish refugees, Jews and others in his diocese. There was a project relating the Secours du Pape, Papal Rescue, for foreigners staying in France, which included measures to be taken all over the Limousin region. Since 1939, an organization called Catholic Charitable Works of Limoges, founded by Monsignor Astoui, brought together different religious orders, such as the visiting sisters of the parishes, the Sister Guard, and the Ladies of Charities, alongside the organization of the Sister of Saint Vincent Paul and the Women's League of Catholic Actions. Monsignor Astoui encouraged also those initiatives, especially in areas where internment camps were located. He also formed local organizations charged with carrying out the charitable work desired to buy the Holy Father. The another diocese is the diocese of Rodez in the Aveyron. The diocese is very, this is a department very Catholic. And according to the reports, different reports, Monsignor Charles Chaillot preached trust and obedience like every other bishop to Pétain in common with all bishops in France under the Vichy regime. But yet he encouraged several, uh, to hide several Jewish children in the Abbey of Bonnecamp of the Franciscan sister in the convent of La Cause de Indirect and more of there, he received also money from the Vatican to um, uh, encourage other Christian schools, uh, the White Father, the Sister of Saint Joseph, and other Catholic institutions to receive and hide Jews in this uh, locality. Also, Monseigneur Saliège from Toulouse also sent Jews to this locality. And uh, also, another bishop in the round, Bishop of Auch, Monseigneur Begin, also sent his Jews, Jews to this locality. Everyone sent, uh, knows that they can receive support in this locality for this bishop. In the Diocese the, um, of Paris, of course, in the occupied, occupied zone, uh, the Cardinal Suard 
and, um, and numerous priests and nuns, in particular the sister of Notre Dame de Sion, reg were regularly watched in s and some were arrested and deported, deported during the years uh, 14 to 44. Following the raffles of um, Paris in 41 and 42, the cardinal gave instructions to the recep reception of uh, many Jewish children and in different and adults in different congregations and religious institutions like the Sister of the Visitation, the Carmelite Sister, the Sister of the Charity of Saint Paul, Little Sister of Pools, etc. More than 500 children had been hidden by the nuns. A significant number of Catholic priests and lay people in the diocese engaged, engaged in additional rescue effort with the support of Card Cardinal Suar, like Father Théomir Devaux for the fa Father of Notre Dame de Sion, the Sister of Notre Dame de Sion, Father Daniel Pézeril, and many others, Father Michel Riquet, and many others um, um, priests and religious sisters and institutions. In conclusion, we can s uh, say that Pius XII uh, sent money and asked many bishops to take action to rescue Jews all over Europe, including fans. Marusin also demonstrates that from 1914, uh, pa um, Pope Pius uh, the 12 regularly helped bishops who were involved in rescuing Jews in France. The Vatican sent money for this purpose and also encouraged bishops to denounce publicly the deportation of Jews. Monsignor Salier's letter explicitly condemned the deportation and proclaimed, Jews are men, Jews are women, they are part of mankind, they are bro our brothers. A Christian cannot forget this. Saliège was not alone. In fact, in more than 17 dioceses in which bishop, priests, nuns, and lay Catholics were involved in different activities to aid and protect Jews, both adults and children. In fact, the Vatican sent several millions in order to help refugees in other, in other Jews um, and other Jews in Lyon, Toulouse, Limoges, Marseille, Avignon, many uh, dioceses in France. And in, in, it is time, in my sense, to recognize the courage and those bishops and other religious people who worked closely with the Vatican and who protected Jews and supported the various initiatives to rescue them during the Holocaust. There is a solid, irrefutable evidence concerning the Vatican relations with them and their activity in the rescue Jews. And now, another point that I want to say for conclusion is for the Polish situation. What can we learn about this? In my opinion, regularly Pius XII received information about the situation of church, priest, bishop, nuns, Catholic, intelligentsia since the German occupation in Poland. He encouraged bishops in Poland to act against Nazism to help Jews and others. And you can see as in French, but at least I didn't uh, finished all my um, research about this. It's only in the beginning, but we can see that um, several bishops, archbishops in Poland, especially Adam Sapieha of Diocese of Prakowy, uh, who maintained contact with the Pope secretly, and the um, Bishop of Kiels, Bishop of Shestova, excuse me for my accent in Poland, <laughs> Bishop of Diocese of Kiels, Bishop of uh, Tarnow, the Archbishop of Warsaw, um, Archbishop, um, Bishop of Pinsk, of, um, Archbishop of Vilnius, all these um, bishops are, are in contact with the Vatican and they encourage aid and help to Jews in their diocese in different ways. Of course, it was very difficult for them to do something 
and to uh, diffuse the, the papal or to listen to the Radio Vatican and like this, but they, they encourage priests and, will, and nuns in their diocese to do and to rescue uh, Jews. This, I think, is very uh, important to know. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And now, I'd like to invite Professor Grzegorz Berendt, the professor of the University of Gdańsk and the director of the World War II Museum in Gdańsk. Because of April the 1st, 2022, he has been appointed by the Prime Minister as the chairman of the International Auschwitz Council. He is a historian uh, researching uh, the Polish Jews and other peoples of the Pomerania region. He has published many books and scientific articles. He is the head of the Program Council of the Jewish Historical Institute and he's the member of the Council of Auschwitz-Birkenau. He's the chief editor of the Polish Jewish Studies and uh, the Historica Gnanensa magazine. He was awarded the Golden Cross of uh, Mary's the Medal of Ministry of Education and the uh, Cross of the uh, Bologna Restituta. And I'd like in the professor to uh, present the state of the research on rescuing Jews in Poland with special emphasis on the institution of the Roman Catholic Church. Your Magnificence. All the priests and all the audience here, all the participants, I'd like to first of all thank you for your invitation. I'm really glad to be here. The German National Socialist chose the area of occupied Poland as the site for the annihilation of the most European Jews. Consequently, at least 90% uh, of the approximately 3.4 million Polish Jews and um, nearly uh, a million citizens of other countries, um, they were annihilated in our country. Crime was uh, carried out uh, in stages, but its beginning should be traced back to September 1939, and the main phase uh, can be um, the period uh, of about two years between June 1941 and November 1943. It was an unprecedented and brutal uh, nature of the methods and, and the enormous scale. That was something that uh, totally surprised Polish society. It provoked a variety of reactions. The terror forced the passivity of millions, while corruption and anti-Semitism and pressure uh, from the occupying forces generated collaboration of tens of thousands of uh, Polish citizens. But there was disagreement. Uh, people did not agree to the evil, and it pushed thousands of uh, tens of thousands of Poles into action. Over the past 78 years, all types of Polish reactions to the evil of the Holocaust or Shoah have been and continue to be the interest of uh, two historians. The Germans sought to dis disintegrate uh, the Polish society. They were uh, seeking uh, the weakest human links and exploited them for their purpose and at the same time exploited its best representatives. Terror and corruption were elements of the influence on Polish society, among others, in order to successfully carry out the Third Reich plans for the total extermination of the Jews. The first researchers who began to study the history of the Holocaust on the Polish uh, soil in a systematic way were those who were associated with the Jewish Historical Commissions and later the Jewish Historical Institute. They published the first findings, uh, and uh, that's uh, they were published in uh, um, 
in the count of uh, analytical studies and uh, collections of documents. Those who left Poland continued their missions outside Poland. Um, an example can be Michał Borwicz and his monumental work, Arish Papiren, the Aryan documents, published uh, when he has left uh, his uh, former homeland. It was in those publications that the first mentions um, that we could hear about the facts uh, that uh, Jews were aided by their Aryan neighbors or acquaintances, colleagues, sometimes people related to them. This help also was carried out by, uh, by the clergy and the religious uh, uh, people. When we talk about the second half of uh, the 1940s, uh, we should not forget about the important publications of the historians related with the main commission of the investigation of German crimes from 1949 onward named Nazi crimes in Poland. Uh, supposed, uh, they dealt with the general uh, German occupational uh, policy. The Holocaust victims and non-Jewish witnesses, they uh, they left a trace of their experience of what happened to them in the notes they made while they were still at war, or they were uh, given accounts accepted by historian and journalists. Some of them were published. It's from them that we learned that of the tens of thousands of Polish Jews rescued in the occupied Poland, the dominant, uh, the prevailing uh, number experienced both help but also wrongdoings from their non Jewish fellow citizens. Those um, who survived were those who were lucky enough to con- con- determine an effective rescuers. Unfortunately, thousands of Jews were not so lucky. They fell victim to betrayal, the crimes they were determined by greed, uh, or due to anti-Semitism or submission um, uh, because the Poles were submitted to the occupiers. In the first post-war years, the country published uh, on events that took place throughout the pre-war Poland. Uh, and not excluding the eastern borderlands uh, in Polish Kresy. From 1948 onward, it was limited only to the area delimited by the uh, post-war borders of the Republic. This changed in 1989 when it was again possible to describe events taking place throughout Poland within its pre-Yalta borders. Of course, it does not refer to those historians who could write being outside the communist uh, bloc countries. The evolution of the political situation in Poland also affected who and how Jewish, uh, um, Jewish-Christian Jewish relations were written about in the context of the German occupation. In the years 1949-1955, it was only possible to write well about those who were communists. People who were in the opposite side of the world of the ideas and regarding the attitude of uh, to Polish uh, the attitude to Polish sovereignty were either passed over in silence or presented only in a negative light. The political changes in the country in 1956 influenced a new way of writing about certain individuals and institutions in the context of their wartime activities. Good words began to appear at some, in the context of some activists who were non-communist, uh, and they were allowed to participate in the creation of the public opinion to a certain extent. A sign of the times was the um, journalistic and uh, the prose work of uh, so, um, uh, Zofia Kosak Szczutska or Wladysław Bartoszewski. Associated strongly with the Roman Catholic Church, uh, they were writing about Polish Jewish relations during German occupation, and they did not hesitate to mention the priests, monks, and nuns who helped the Jews. In 1960s, Tatiana Bernstein and Anna Rotkowski, who were associated with the Jewish historical institute, or Shimon Dadner, who was, you know, at the interface uh, between the Jewish Historical Institute and the main commission for the investigation of Nazi crimes. They also talked about it in their publications. They were like classic works, but new uh, publications appear uh, based on the testimonies and uh, we need to remember that the witnesses writing about the past in the Poland were constrained by the censorship, the fear of the censorship or its actual use. Those publishing in the so-called free world were constrained by other factors, the frailty of human memory or selective approach to various themes. Clearly, the German occupier remained uh, 
the, the negative uh, character was the German occupier. Nevertheless, the survivors wrote both about the good and the bad things they have experienced from their fellow citizens. Mentions of negative, um, mentioning the negative behavior of some Poles uh, uh, caused displeasure among at least some communist decision makers. And it's not just the Third Reich, but also the people who were involved in those anti-Semitic actions. And I can say that for the last 20 years, um, this tendency is prevailing uh, in the interest of researchers. Although many crimes committed by German perpetrators have not yet lived to see a detailed study and description of the cause. The researchers of the history of the Holocaust, active in the free world, based on the most up-to-date state of knowledge, described the events solidly. However, there were also people for whom, instead of knowledge, there was the predominant desire to make a name for themselves uh, uh, in the public space and uh, to formulate a load-bearing, uh, catchy, scandalizing themes about the mass collaboration of Poles to detriment of the Jews. This was to the liking of some communists who saw it as an opportunity to create themselves as defenders of the good name of all Poles. And uh, very strongly, those voices uh, could be heard, the voices of the communist uh, propaganda in 1968. Years passed, and the interest in the subject uh, has not diminished. In fact, it has started to grow. There were synthetic studies of various types, and there were regional or uh, studies or studies of particular uh, social circles. The representatives of the former Polish underground uh, state, such as Stefan uh, Karbonski, they started to speak out. In the country, the first monographic publications emerged, including a fundamental study by Vladislav Bartoszewski and Zofia Lavinovna. But there were also researchers who began to focus on those uh, issues regarding the attitude of the Roman Catholic Church toward the Holocaust. It can be assumed that the research uh, was an offshoot of the accusations made by various people against the Pope Pius XI, attributing to him passivity or even indifference to the persecution of the Jews. These accusations were also made against other uh, Kyrakas hierarchs of the Catholic Church. The subject of the reaction of the so-called Aryans to the anti-Jewish action of the Germans appeared to be of interest to an interesting number of researchers, including the those associated with the Roman Catholic Church. And this trend continues. Very important publications were prepared as early as in the 1980s by Reverend Professor Sigmund Zielinski, associated with the Catholic University of Lublin, and Reverend Professor Franciszek Stopniak of the Academy of Catholic Theology in Warsaw. Today, books uh, um, that are regarded uh, classic uh, are the ones of Eva Kurek on the contribution of the Roman Catholic uh, female uh, religious uh, orders. Uh, um, taking care and rescuing Jewish children. The same subject is studied by Sister Teresa Antonietta Fronsek. Both researchers have conducted thorough research referring to numerous and varied sources. In the last dozen years or so, the important findings have uh, come from uh, research inspired and conducted by uh, Father Dr. Arthur Rittel Adrianik as part of the project Priests Rescuing Jews. The role of the Lublin Research Center in the sphere of research on the relationship between um, the people of the church and the Jewish uh, uh, people during the German war is difficult um, to overestimate. In addition to the authors I have already mentioned, um, we shouldn't forget about the uh, other research and publications. For example, of Darius Libyanka, um, who uh, has devoted several decades of his professional activity to studying and describing the aspects of uh, German Nazi genocidal activity and Polish Jewish relations during the war. One of them is uh, the reaction of the church to the extermination of the Jews. Undoubtedly, after 1989, there was a tremendous acceleration of research work on Christian Jewish relations in the Polish uh, areas and lands, including the, the ones during the, sec uh, during the Second World War. Today, the situation is radically different than that in the late 1980s. First of all, the topic 
is being researched and published by at least several dozen historians of both sexes. We have works whose authors strive to show all aspects of the past. And uh, they are not afraid to raise difficult issues. Um, and those issues is like the involvement of the thousands of Polish citizens in German repression and extermination operations, but at the same time, emphasizing the heroism of those people, of those people who did not uh, uh, did not refuse help and helped regardless of the terror. However, there are also publications whose main purpose is uh, to say that uh, the 30 million Christian citizens of the Republic of Poland either indifferently uh, uh, watched the tragedy of the murdered Jews or actively joined uh, uh, such genocidal activities. And this uh, responsibility is very often shifted uh, to the hierarchy of the Roman Catholic Church and uh, describing cases of some criminal activity of Polish citizens against the Jews. But when they talk about such activity, they uh, reduce to a minimum the description of the conditions created by the occupiers. Most often references to the scale of collaborationist phenomena are based on conjecture and out of context statement by Holocaust, Holocaust victims such as Emanuel Ringelblum. When the church has mentioned the fact that at least 769 priests and nast in 389 towns were actively involved in various forms of assistance to Jews. Sisters saved over one uh, 1,500 Jews uh, were saved by sisters from uh, over 169 uh, religious quarters. Of the 20 Roman Catholic bishops, a um, vast majority were involved directly or indirectly in the help. Those numbers, we know them, so uh, thanks to the historians' work, mainly the historians related to the uh, Catholic University of Lublin and the Lublin region um, historians. Issuing the documents for the Jews was done not against but by the permission of the Kayaks. The same about sheltering the Jews in the uh, church buildings. Uh, Reverend Dr. Jarosław Wąsowicz writes, I quote, it's worth recalling that in 1939 more than 10,000 diocesan priests carried out their pastoral ministry in the Republic of Poland. Of this number, one in five priests suffered death. In diocese directly incorporated in the Third Reich, almost every second priest was murdered, and the pastoral activities of the church were virtually eliminated. In 1939, male religious orders in Poland had more than 7,500 members. Out of uh, this number, 370 were murders. In addition, during the Second World War, about 4,000 priests and uh, religious as well as 11,000 nuns, 11, nuns were imprisoned in German camps. Those who remained at large in turn were invigilated and some uh, were under persecution. To the number of victims should be added the clergy and religious who suffered death at the hands of the Soviets and were sent to gulags. As a result of all these forms of repression, almost 50% of priests were eliminated from their pastoral duties. Thus, they were prevented not only from exercising their priestly functions like this uh, holy sacraments, but also from providing any kind of pastoral assistance to the persecuted. From the stories of Stella Zilbenstein and other survivors, we know how big was the impact of the priests, nuns, and monks and friars who urged the faithful to help the Jews and not to lay a hand uh, to, uh, and not to help the evil uh, carried out by the occupiers. It cannot be forgotten. It does not mean that the heroism of a few hundred or even more and we don't know between these three, 767 to almost 1,000 uh, people. Well, it does not mean that those nearly 1,000 uh, who are heroic uh, 
were just like all the others. Not everybody had the courage to help uh, the neighbors, including the Jews. We meet today in connection with the publication of the monumental work by Richard Tinder of, um, uh, on the Polish Roman Catholic Church and bringing aid to Jews under the conditions of German occupation. The author deserves words of appreciation because he created an extremely rich database concerning Polish-Jewish relations during the Second World War and because it is now available for us. We can read uh, um, and uh, research this data. On the other hand, it's not the end of the historian's work. It's just uh, uh, one point on the axis of the cognitive, uh, of the research process. There is still much that has to be done, especially as uh, the East Provinces of the Occupied Poland are concerned. The volume published uh, uh, a month ago on the assistance of the Jews throughout uh, the Occupied Poland presented the, 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 of the, Tomasz Domański and Alicja Gondarek shows how much has already been accomplished, but it also shows us how much is still to be done. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. I'd like to invite now Professor Sebastian Piontkowski, who's a historian, and he's the specialist at the IPN, and he specializes in the general government. Chief specialist at the IPN branch in the in Lublin, the Radom branch, specializes in the study of the social and economic study of the central Polish lands in the 19th and 20th century. Author and co-author of, among others, occupation propaganda, this is Radomski of the general governorship. And uh, recently, he's been focusing development of seven volume publishing series to be published from, 19, from 2019, titled Relations of Assistance Provided to Church by Poles in 1939-1945. And there is an edition of almost a thousand documents. Could you uh, uh, please present uh, your um, presentation on, the archival, on archival materials concerning the rescue of Jews in the general government? Uh, Magnificencio. Szanowni Państwo. Director, ladies and uh, gentlemen, those sitting closer and further in the room, I want to start with saying uh, thank you, my heartfelt thanks for inviting me. Uh, we have a great atmosphere here. I will remember the day for long. And after so many letters exchanged with um, Mr. Tindorf, I finally was able to meet him in person. I want to congratulate to him on the book. I haven't read it yet, but this is my weekend read. I promise that. It looks really impressive. I want to congratulate to the publishing house of Kul because the editing, uh, the layout is really, really beautiful, really impressive. I've been asked to tell you about uh, some sources, sources that we used for uh, searching and researching the so-called rescue, rescue operations, rescue campaigns. We work with uh, records, with documents, and you must be aware how difficult, how challenging this work is. Historians uh, studying different periods of history, of history of Poland, they have different uh, tasks and different research perspectives uh, as regards the use of sources. We have very limited sources about the beginnings of the Polish state in the 10th century. But on the other hand, some say it's easy to write about history when you have limited sources because you have so much room for interpretation. And perhaps for years, we are going to argue whether Mieszko I was baptized in Kalish or Gniezno or elsewhere. And those who study a post-war period, the co communist Poland, on the other hand, they have thousands of files of records of uh, archives, uh, 
documents produced by the party, by administration. So you need to have patience and you need to be really focused to find, to single out the best possible sources to talk about. And historians studying the Second World War, we are also in a difficult situation. And if you just uh, have a look at uh, this book by Richard Tindorf, you will see immediately how gigantic work was done to prepare this book, to prepare this text. When we speak about uh, persecution of Poles for uh, rescuing a uh, Jewish of Polish uh, origin, uh, of Polish citizenship, first we, we should look at documents uh, produced by German administration. And this is really a disaster because although on the left-hand side of the Vistula River and on the right-hand side the situation was different, it's always bad or used to be always bad because the materials produced by the German police, Schutzpolizei, Ordnungspolizei, Polnische Polizei, or that we call Navy Blue Police in Poland, or military police, they are very limited, or they are not there. Lubelskia, the Lublin region, is, is a bit more lucky because uh, the, the, the front was moving relatively fast, but when Soviets reached uh, the Vistula River, they stopped for more than six months. And what is left after German records, I'm talking about the general government office, this is just, uh, I would say, this is just rubbish. This is what Germans left because they believed it's useless. So we don't know what happened to all the records taken to Germany when Germans were fleeing uh, this part of Poland. According to law, these records, these files should be returned here uh, where they were produced originally, but we never know when this may happen. On the other hand, we don't have records about people who were arrested for rescuing or helping Jews, who were taken to court, who were sentenced, and there were many such cases. We have no records of German courts, German prosecutors. They are there, but they are very scarce or non-existent. And we have also some information from certain sources that somebody was sentenced, somebody was detained, or somebody requested the general governor for the act of mercy, for example, if someone was sentenced to death. But we, we don't have specific records to rely on to study or create a narrative about these times. It's also very strange what happened to the files uh, on prisons, because this material is there, but it's, again, very vast. So it's hard to find a historian who would be able to go through this. And, well, maybe if I were a bit younger, I would try this, but anyway, I have studied, I have at least reviewed 14,000 personal files of prison, prisoners in Radom. Among this group, I found less than 40 files of people who were sentenced uh, to prison for helping Jews. It took me two years to find these 40 files only. If you look at some uh, online inventories, if you look at, uh, for example, the Mokotov prison in Warsaw and its files, it's so big that it's really impossible to search through this material on your own. This will take years to cover it. After, when it comes to the period after the Second World War, 
if we assume there is some gradation, there is some hierarchy of sources, I believe official administrative documents should be given priority. But in communist Poland, uh, perhaps we should rely on uh, prosecutors or investigation files uh, that were created after the decree of August 1944, which uh, concerned uh, persecution of people who had been cooperating with the Nazis. And there are many such uh, files. They are used by historians today to describe uh, different attitudes, different activities of individuals that we today consider contemptible. And there were uh, people who were not only indifferent, but also uh, were helping uh, the occupant in persecuting Jews. But still, I review these uh, files because it ha very often happens that somebody accused of uh, breaking the law during the occupation, they were able to uh, invite witnesses to uh, testify that they were doing quite the opposite, sometimes working undercover. Uh, I have seen uh, testimonies of Jews who confirmed that specific individuals were giving them shelter, were giving them food, although apparently they worked closely with the Nazis. So there are very many different cases, very interesting cases to study. On the other hand, we can say that as regards rescuing activities, our knowledge relies on witnesses testimonies. Of course, we have memoirs, we have different narratives uh, that have been published, but in fact, we have three big collections of uh, testimonies of those who survived and those who were helping the survivors. Already in 1944, the the committee with the uh, central office of uh, Polish Jews started to collect uh, stories, testimonies from uh, Jews who left hiding. Uh, they spoke a lot about the Holocaust, but they also spoke a lot about how they were saved. Those testimonies are still kept by the, in the archives of the Jewish Historic um, uh, Institute. That's one collection. Another collection is Yad Vashem in Jerusalem. Those who uh, came to Palestine, to Israel, including from Poland, they were, were requested to tell their stories, Second World War stories to Yad Vashem. Many of them spoke about how they were saved. There's also Spielberg's archive and some other places where files are still kept. But we have also an interesting collection that Professor Beren has just mentioned, which is uh, the Chief Committee of Investigating Crimes Against the Polish Nation. It was uh, at some point the only such a body to investigate Nazi crimes. When I first had a look at these files as a student, uh, I was, I was uh, uh, anxious uh, to hear from one of my mentors that that committee had been a, a great, a good body to work, but they failed to collect stories of Poles rescuing Jews. So in simple terms, uh, very often they were investigating only cases of deaths and there were so many such cases that they were not able to study uh, cases of uh, those who survived. And if you imagine members of that committee traveling across the country, there were no trains, no cars, so it wasn't easy for them to cover everything. And it was perhaps in the 1970s where the same committee 
launched a, a project to invite Poles who had been helping um, uh, Jews during uh, World War II to get in touch with the committee and offer their testimonies. That was partly uh, due to the process of being named uh, righteous about the nations, because at that time the only institution that was kind of intermediary uh, was the Jewish Historic Institute. And that files are, are, have been um, collected and are still there. So almost 2,000 people were contacted to tell their stories, sometimes telling the truth, sometimes lying. But anyway, among them, there were many people previously unknown to the official administration. They were uh, involved in helping Jews, and they claimed that they were still in touch with the Jewish families that they rescued. And uh, some of these uh, photos I'm showing you uh, here on the screen come from IPN collections, a very unique material, because for several dozens of years, these photos were kept um, in the archives of the Institute, and nobody really took care uh, to study who these people were, uh, that they should be uh, uh, taken out of oblivion, and their stories should be heard. Now, to conclude, uh, perhaps we should look ahead to see what else can be done in terms of uh, studying archives and whether there are still some places where we can find information, sources, records to learn more about Second World War. I believe such places are still there. I believe also church archives or parish archives are such places because uh, Archives kept by dioceses are quite well studied, but I believe that sometimes parish uh, chronicles, uh, records, contain information that might be very valuable today and they need to be explored. Although, unfortunately, uh, someone who would like to study or research this resembles a jigsaw puzzle. You just put together all these items, all these puzzles, somebody's name, place, piece of story. You put it together to create a narrative. So I believe um, Richard Tindorf, in a way, has created a mosaic out of these pieces, a big mosaic, perhaps 10 by 10 meters. And uh, it shows how much time and effort you need to produce this kind of work and it shows a variety of sources that when put together you can create a very interesting very uh, gripping story uh, for potential readers i'm so happy to see some students in the room and and perhaps online uh, if you are interested in studying the period of Second World War in Poland, there is still a lot of work to do. Congratulations, Mr. Tindorf, on this book, and hope to see you again in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, and let me now move to the second part of our event, and um, we will be talking about the book itself and the presentation of uh, Richard Tedorf uh, will be done by Reverend Professor Sigmund Zieliński, what I'm uh, review, uh, rescue of Jews by the Polish Catholic Church. This presentation will be done by Professor Wacław Bierzbiniec. He is a historian and uh, he is working at the University of Rzeszów, where he is the head of the Department of Jewish History and Culture, the Institute of History there since 2012. He conducts scientific research in the field of Jewish history and culture in the 19th and 20th century, National Registration's History of the Catholic Church in the 20th century. He's a member of, among others, Committee of Jewish History and Culture of the Polish Academy of Skills, Polish Society of Jewish Students, uh, European Association for Jewish Studies, and the Program Council of the Jewish 
Historical Institute. He is the recipient. He was awarded uh, many awards and honors, including the award of the Reverend Stanislav uh, Musha, awarded two people who are uh, of special merits for Christian and Polish Jewish dialect, received an honorary decoration awarded by the Association of Jewish Veterans and Victims of the World uh, War II, the so called Warsaw Ghetto Uprising Medal, in 2020 by the order of the President of the Republic of Poland. He was awarded the Silver uh, Cross uh, of uh, Merit. And the floor is your professor. We are in this international, let's say, group of people. So I will start in three uh, languages, uh, English, French, and uh, Hebrew. So as uh, Professor Norman Davis rightly remarked, uh, uh, when he referred to the book of the promotion of which we are participating today, and. Uh, we can read it in English on the cover of the book. All nations on earth are composed of the good, the bad, and the indifference. And uh, Richard Tendorf's uh, comprehensive uh, volume emphatically demonstrates the truth of this uh, saying with regard to the Nazi occupied parts of Poland during the war. Thanks to its um, exotic uh, documentation, Tendorf uh, depicts uh, in a beautiful way the compassion that counters the widespread propagation of exclusively negative stereotypes and helps to build, if necessary, um, a multifaceted panorama of the historical reality. And that's the end of the uh, quotation. Oh, I would like to thank you very much for the invitation for today's conference. And uh, it is also a great honor for me to have been asked uh, to present this two-volume book, which was published by this year by the publishing house of the Catholic University of Lublin. The book is entitled Wartime Rescue of Jews by the Polish Catholic Church the testimony of survivors and rescuers uh, compiled, annotated, and edited by uh, Mr. Uh, Richard Tindorf and uh, Father Professor Sigmund Sieliński. And I have the great honor uh, to know him for many years now. He's a very important professor at the University of the Catholic University of Lublin. Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, the attitudes of Poles towards Jews, especially those relating to the period of the, world war, the Second World War, despite the existence of a relatively large number of studies, uh, uh, constantly evoke many emotions. When I talk about emotions, I say, well, some people think this, uh, some people think that. Well, we can't all think in the same way. I mean, we have to have different points of view and uh, try to be objective at the same time. So when uh, perhaps I will not go into that. It's uh, for a different uh, time, perhaps, this discussion, but whenever we have different perspectives on a given issue, we've got the possibility to develop a more objective, uh, let's say, perspective. However, when we deal with Catholic Church, and I would like to underline it, the Catholic Church and the Second World War, the church that was uh, I mean, the priests, the nuns, the uh, monks, friars, uh, those were the people who first, who were the first to be exterminated by the uh, Nazis. So it is even more worthy of praise that they wanted to be a part of the resistance and to give a helping hand to those uh, Jews that uh, were to be annihilated. And when I 
was listening to the previous speakers, I started thinking with a, like this Arian papers. I mean, we, we think about it. Uh, we talk about Arian papers. Someone survived thanks to Arian papers. Someone had uh, Arian uh, papers. What are those Arian papers? Those are the false documents, the Christianing document, the certificate, and the false certificate of marriage. So those are the Aryan papers. Those are those documents that many people survived. Some of them live until today. So those were the documents that saved those peoples. The book of uh, Mr. Tindorf and of uh, Reverend Zielinski shows us just only the tip of the iceberg of what was going on in the Second World War. We don't know about a lot of things that were going on, and we'll probably never find out. But the Aryan papers that we mentioned, the documents, really, we need to keep in mind what they were if there are any controversies around that. And there are some people who question whether the church helped or didn't, or whether the church had a negative attitude towards Jews or not. Just think about the documents, Aryan documents, and that will tell you a lot about the attitude of the Catholic Church. The participation of the Polish church, clergy in saving Jews during the Holocaust cannot be um, a point of controversy. This is understood very well by all those who scientifically studied the broad issue of the Polish-Jewish relations during the World War II. And it was a period that was particularly difficult for the Jewish people, but to a large extent it was really hard for Poles. However, on this issue, like many others uh, concerning the issues of Poles, in this, uh, towards Jews during this period is not fully um, covered, as uh, Rabbi Abraham Skurka uh, said. And he's an ex a, a great example to me because he shows that you can outreach other circles, non Jewish circles. Catholic circles. He's a lecturer in biblical and rabbinic literature, and he's been a participant in the many Christian Jewish dialogue. And he rightly pointed out that there is a need for further intensive research for to get a picture of the Catholic Church and Polish Catholic institutions and the communities in general in terms of attitudes towards Jews, Jews during the Second World War. And unfortunately, uh, despite uh, the huge role of Catholic Church in rescuing Jews during the German occupation, we do not have full knowledge on this subject. And at this time, this is, um, remember, too important about getting uh, the Aryan documents. So baptismal or Christianing certificates or marriage certificates, it has to be underlined. Also worth noting that uh, during sermons, Polish priests uh, drew attention uh, to the Christian uh, love of one's neighbors, and they were condemning the non-Christian behavior towards the persecuted Jewish population. The orphanages in which the nuns were run, Jewish children were being hidden. Some of them are still alive, mainly in Israel and the USA. And I had this uh, honor to uh, meet some of them personally. So those uh, orphans uh, had their personal data changed. Those seeking rescues uh, found it in monasteries, both women and male. They were helped in a selfless way by nuns, priests, and Jewish children through those documents, through this help, get the opportunity to survive. 
the lay uh, Christians, Catholics, who were very actively involved in hiding people uh, of Jewish descent. And those who understand very well the great importance and uh, significance of the help that was given by Polish priests and nuns, who were very often murdered and persecuted by the Germans, which I have mentioned. So um, those who understand very well the importance uh, are the authors of this important uh, book, Richard Tindorf and Reverend Professor Zygmunt Zieliński, who have been working on this uh, problem for many years. Richard Tindorf is a Canadian lawyer and documentary and uh, a documentary filmmaker, and he's the um, author of legal and historical publication, including works on Polish-Jewish relations during the World uh, War II. The Professor Zygmunt Zieliński is uh, the author of numerous widely cited scholarly works specializing in the history of the Catholic Church in the 19th and 20th century. The book, written in English, meets the expectations uh, of the scientific uh, circles and broad public uh, interest in the Polish-Jewish relations during the Second World War in many countries. I would like to emphasize that those relations are very often presented uh, in those countries in simplification without, unfortunately, stereotypes or even exclusively pointing to the collaboration of Poles uh, uh, with uh, Germans uh, in their anti-Jewish policy during the Holocaust. Canada, I went to Toronto and I went to Montreal and there are those circles, unfortunately, and this point of view is really underlined there. So there are some Jewish circles that don't like it when it when it is shown that Poles actually saved Jews. That was actually my experience when I went to Montreal and this is unwelcome uh, by them to show the role of the Catholic Church in rescuing Jews, but we have to do it because this is showing the truth. The greater the um, importance of what uh, Richard Tinder has done because he managed to go against the odds, go up the stream. And as uh, priest uh, Rizik has said, only dead fish flow with the current. Sometimes you have to fight the current. Uh, that's the way um, the co-author of this book has been doing, uh, Mr. Richard Tenderf. Yes. Uh, so um, this book, as I have said, meets the expectations of the scientific uh, circles and the aim was to collect, analyze and show the information on rescue of Jews by the Polish clergy and showing all known facts. There are a lot of those facts. As a result, this work has a monographic character, and it's a kind of like a collection, a, comp a compendium, very valuable, and it is very necessary because of this comprehensive uh, perspective of the issue that is presented in it. The authors are aware, rightly so, and they mentioned that in the introduction that a complete and definite a review of the facts uh, concerning the rescue of Jews by the Polish clergy is still probably impossible. It should be emphasized that it's a uh, very important work. It's necessary and it is innovative in its nature. It is the result of, mm, as we have already mentioned, many years of extensive uh, scientific research uh, and archive um, examination. As from the methodological methodology point of view, the authors were inspired by uh, Martin Gilbert's uh, valuable and widely known work, The Holocaust, The Jewish Tragedy, um, issued in 1986. As a result, the study 
strives to be as objective as possible. But uh, the book sought only to present those results that focus on establishing the extent, the range of the rescue efforts. So establishing the range of the rescue force that are taken by the Catholic uh, clergy. That's the core. The book avoids generalizations about the behavior of the clergy and the general population, population during the period. If we want to evaluate the methodology in scientific workshop, it needs to be underlined. The authors were very meticulous and thorough in the analysis of the individual facts and historical process. As a result, the interpretation that is in the book is correct and comprehensive. Also, the methods that they have chosen to collect and compile the material show reliability of the research results and uh, the, it is possible to carry out the verification. At the same time, it should be noted that the book contains as many as 2,839, so it's a really big number, 2,839 footnotes. It's uh, Benedictine's work. The interpretation of uh, the research results and the conclusions that are formulated, they are very insightful and very factual. The scientific justifications are made uh, on the basis of application of logical principles. There is the use of inductive and deductive procedures. And the authors took care of uh, conceptual precision and nomenclatural uniformity. The terms are um, uniform. In general, the text is a really um, good uh, as far as the linguistic standards uh, are concerned. Uh, it's a very good English. The title of the discussion, Wartime Rescue of Jews by the Polish Catholic Church, the testimony of survivors and rescuers, um, is something that I like very much because it's uh, uh, very consistent with the content. Mr. Tindorf and uh, uh, Father Professor uh, Zieliński uh, try to be as objective as possible in the presentation of their facts. And in, in they publish the testimony of survivors and rescuers. I can see many students here. I'm not sure whether they're the students of law. But from the entity audiatur et altera parts, it means listen to the other's uh, party as well. Don't listen to just one uh, person talking. Just listen to the uh, inter uh, to the adversary as well. So it's very important in the case of this book because this is a really monumental publication. I think we have heard this term uh, from uh, Professor Baron. There are two volumes published by um, Mr. Richard Tindorf and uh, Father Professor Sigmund Zielinski. They are extremely extensive, those volumes. They cover 1,274 pages. The book contains introduction, five uh, uh, substantive uh, chapters, compilation of the uh, bibliography, and valuable appendices. Uh, appendices or supplements, which are kind of annex. An additional advantage is the map, the, the maps and the index of locations and names. That's very important because it turns out that even the smallest locations and we can uh, see that. So you can actually read the book uh, in excerpts. So if you are interested in a particular uh, location, you can find this location and uh, get familiar with the facts uh, regarding this location. The help given to Jews by the Polish clergy this issue 
is tackled from different perspectives. There are different opinions on the subject, which is a proof of their desire to be as objective uh, as possible in presenting the issues. The second, uh, that's the first chapter the, chapter. the second chapter shows the extent of the extermination of the uh, Polish um, clergy uh, and uh, religious uh, orders, uh, which was carried out by the Germans during the first period of the German uh, occupation. From the very beginning of the German occupation, the Catholic Church, uh, its clergy, and in the West, um, that was especially in the West, that was incorporated into the Reich, were subjected to persecution that has not been seen before ever. The chapter includes information from uh, official rep reports of the Polish church transmitted to the Vatican at the time. And here we can see the news of cruel treatment of hundreds of um, members of the Polish church, including bishops. The repressions were part of a, a broader campaign, and, and it was a German called Intelligenzaktion. In the third chapter, we can see um, the years of the German occupation between September 1939 June to, to June 1941, and it presents the reaction of the Polish Catholic Church to the difficult situation of the Jews. The fourth chapter analyzes the attitudes of the Polish clergy's assistance to the Jews in the eastern borderlands, the so-called Kresy in the face of the bloody repressions that uh, were imposed on them by the Germans after um, the entrance of the German troops in June 1941. As you know, that uh, Germans uh, rounded up um, uh, and executed the Jews. Many priests tried to intervene with the German authorities uh, to stop those abuses. The biggest chapter uh, with 827 pages is uh, chapter number five because it contains the analysis of the um, attitudes uh, regarding the rescue uh, presented by the Polish church of a fairly long period because this is uh, from 1942 to 1945 when the German repressions uh, of the Jews were the most intense. Ladies and gentlemen, it should be emphasized that the content of each uh, chapter, uh, preceding chapter, implies um, or presents or introduces the uh, sort of the content of the subsequent chapter. They are very important, the annexes are very important too, because uh, they show uh, the parishes and church institutions where the aid was given to Jews, uh, the religious orders where the Jews were rescued, and uh, the Polish clergy that uh, was recognized by the Yad Vashem as righteous among the nations, the Polish Catholic clergy who lost their lives because they were helping Jews, and uh, sometimes controversial issue, which is the recognition and uh, gratitude for saving lives. The publication in question is of great documentary and cognitive value. To a large extent, it's an, an encyclopedic review of uh, very um, important issues concerning the rescue of Jews by the Polish clergy during the Second World War. At the same time, the book is clearly written. The chronological and uh, problem, um, uh, the arrangement and the arrangement regarding the uh, problem adopted by the authors is uh, uh, fits very well the monographic approach to the subject. The authors conducted uh, an extensive uh, search in the archives in Poland, Israel, the USA. They also reached out to numerous printed sources. The rich bibliography on the subject, studies in Polish, English, Italian, was um, skillfully selected by the authors um, in a manner that justified the subject of the work. Talking about the content of the book briefly, 
about its reliability and the meticulous character. I would also like to point out to a few examples taken from it regarding the wartime rescue of Jews by the Polsce in the Podkarpacie, a region which is something that I am uh, interested in. Uh, using the available studies and archival materials, as a short and pr- Father Professor uh, Sigmund Zielinski referred to an important role of female and male uh, religious orders in uh, rescuing Jews in the Borgarbacie. Also, uh, with regard to the dimensioned attitude of the uh, Przemysl, the Bishop Franciszek Barda. He was very helpful towards Jews because uh, he handed over the certificates um, of Christianing and others uh, to rescue the neophytes from the uh, ghetto. The religious conversions of uh, Uh, such as uh, the Heart Sisters, the Felician Sisters, the Sisters of Divine Providence, um, you know, so the non, um, the Immaculate uh, Mary uh, Sisters in Stara Wieśnia, because of the um, Jesuits, etc., etc. The information regarding the rescuing of Jews. Uh, is very important because it underlines the courage and heroism of a major part of the Polish clergy and have an extremely important educational uh, value. And I would like to underline that. It's really important for the young generation of Poles. And this is really needed because especially now, young needs young people need uh, positive role models. I am convinced that uh, the examples of the attitudes of the clergy from the time of the occupation should be displayed in the monographs of individual towns and cities, not only from the Podkarpacie, but uh, Poland uh, as a whole. This book, undoubtedly, the book written by uh, Mr. Richard Tenderov and uh, Father Professor Zygmunt Zielinski will be very helpful in this regard. It will also serve as a source of inspiration for further research regarding the participation of the Polish clergy in who were saving Jews. And it is needed, which the authors are well aware of. In order to prove this uh, thesis, uh, I will refer to two examples of two people connected with the Podkarpacie region who were saved thanks uh, to the help they were given by this uh, uh, clergy. And the circumstances of the rescues are not included in the book. Ha! Ah, I found something that you have not written about yet. Yes, but it's just, you know, it's because this is a source of exploration. People will be looking for more facts, so you will have to amend it and include it in the next, uh, uh, in the next edition. Lu- Lucia Redman, who lives in Israel, she was saved thanks to the fact she had a false Christianing certificate issued by a Roman Catholic priest in Lubaczów. Thanks to this certificate, she left under a false name and she looked you know, as if she were a Polish Catholic, so she was sent to Germany, survived the war there. Andrzej Korman is another example. He's a Jew who lived in Poland, was sheltered by a peasant family in Grodzisdon. He was registered by a local priest in the parish birth book. He got a Christianing certificate, uh, got a different name, and survived the German occupation. Ladies and gentlemen, in this publication, which is an example of a great uh, diligence and uh, research, in uh, it is rightly emphasized uh, that the clergy both as well as the secular Catholics, they were rescuing people of Jewish origin, although they were threatened with death. In spite of this, guided by the imperative to love uh, one's neighbor and encouraging such love in others, this played a great humanity. 
being uh, human is uh, extremely important. The issue of humanity is of an extreme importance. It's timeless. The examples contained in the book are of universal character. As a result, reading this book should help to understand what human, being human means, how to be a better Christian, how to be altruistic, tolerant, so important in the face of the evil which constantly tries to dominate the good. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Professor. And now we would like to ask the author of the book, uh, Richard Tindorf, to take the floor. Thank you. Eminencio, Szanowni. Your Eminence, the participants, first I wish to thank uh, the Catholic University of Lublin and uh, Professor, Rector, and also Father, Director, director of uh, Heschel Center. First, I want to thank for publishing my volume and for promoting it and inviting me to take part in this uh, impressive event. I also wish to thank Professor uh, Professor Wierzbiński uh, for his Wierzbiński's sorry for his words of recognition. I'm very grateful to hear um, so many good words about this project that we completed together with uh, Reverend Zieliński. We started this work almost 20 years ago without a clear vision on how this is going to develop and when we were going to finish. So today I believe there is still a lot to be done to get the full picture of uh, rescuing operations during the Second World War by the Polish clergy. So what is this book about and how it was written? In brief, uh, this book studies uh, the scope of rescuing Jews by the Polish Catholic clergy. At the heart of the book, there is a narrative based on, saved, uh, on the testimonies of saved Jews and Poles who rescued them. These narratives are supplemented with uh, uh, sources of uh, church origin. I'm not uh, a scientist. Mm, this is not a course book, university course book. This book doesn't touch every aspect of the Catholic Church and every aspect of the Holocaust. I don't make attempts uh, to uh, generalize some of my conclusions, and I don't impose any general theses. On the other hand, I do hope that the book will contribute to the development and uh, of certain certain studies and will help dispel certain unfavorable opinions about the clergy in the context of the Holocaust. The rescuing mm, campaigns uh, by, by the Catholic clergy can be considered a pars pro toto of uh, rescuing uh, Jews by Poles. Often these stories, these narratives overlap. So this book comes from my uh, friendship with uh, Reverend Zieliński, Professor Emeritus uh, at Kohl, and previously head of the Department of um, the History of the Church. In 1993, Adam Mickiewicz Foundation, based in Canada, invited uh, Father Zieliński uh, to Canada, to Carleton University, to make a speech about uh, the Polish Catholic clergy during the Second World War and their rescue missions. At that time, information about this was very scarce, particularly in English. 
an abridged uh, version of uh, Władysław Bartoszewski and Zofia Levin's book, uh, Ten jest z ojczyzny mojej, uh, published in English uh, in 1967-1970, contained some narrative, some testimonies about how uh, priests and nuns helped Jews. And it was only at the late uh, 1980s when several uh, scientific articles were published, including one by Father Zielinski in English. And the first and only um, English-speaking or English-language monograph work was uh, one by Eva Kurek and uh, the rescuing of Jewish children in Catholic cloisters and monasteries. It's titled uh, Your Life is Worth Mine. It was published in 1997. Um, ever since, not uh, so much has been published about it in English. The Polish sources are more numerous, but are also dispersed and fragmented. And so far, there has been no uh, monograph work, single monograph work on this important topic. Now, going back to Canada and uh, the lecture by Father Zielinski in 1993, uh, he produced a special, ta special tables showing uh, diocese by diocese which priests or nuns or monks, um, uh, religious in general, were helping uh, Jews in different way. So that was the beginning of our joint uh, journey to collect narratives, testimonies, records from different rescue campaigns. For another 20 years, we exchanged correspondence. We were seeking contacts with other church historians who were studying the subject. So without uh, Father Zielinski's initiative and help, this book wouldn't have been written. So I am very indebted to Father Zielinski. Uh, I'm, I thank him for, for his assist, assistance on the cover of the book. Uh, for for uh, poor health, uh, Father Zielinski unfortunately has not been able to join us today. Now a few words about the conclusions from the book. First, statistics. According to statistics dated uh, the 1st of January 2022, Yad Vashem listed 105 members of the Catholic uh, clergy, members of the Latin Church, as righteous among the nations. 38 priests and 68 nuns. Last year, Yad Vashem recognized three other uh, priests, Chapran, Jejak, and Fajenski, and five nuns from the convent of uh, St. Francis of the family of Mary. Uh, this, of course, this figure is not complete. So now we have the total of uh, 41 priests and 72 nuns recognized by Yad Vashem. Apart from that, Yad Vashem also recognized five more Poles who became priests who were ordained after the war. On top of that, there were four uh, Protestant, uh, five uh, Orthodox, and ten Ukrainian Greek Catholics, members of the clergy, uh, who were recognized for their rescue effort during the war. Is it many or not many? Well, we believe this is just the tip of the iceberg, uh, judging by our studies. Yad Vashem is not very willing to recognize uh, Polish Catholic priests, even if well documented, as um, righteous. Um, I believe this share of, um, of the clergy 
in the rescue uh, effort is much larger. And you must remember that in Poland, rescuing Jews was uh, penalized uh, by death, unlike in other countries occupied by the Nazis. Uh, in other countries, the rescuers were detained, were sentenced to prison, uh, but never killed. So how many members of the clergy were involved in the rescuing? We don't know that for sure. In our research, we have been able to identify uh, 66 uh, cloisters and 450 other monasteries and church institutions that were involved, 25 um, monasteries, 85 institutions and 700 priests in more than 500 localities across Poland. Not all of the rescuers um, can be identified by the name. And now, how many Jews uh, actually were helped? Again, it's hard to say, but we can speak about several thousand. So what conclusions can be drawn from these statistics, how new data can be interpreted. Well, historians happen to change their opinions, but it's not easy to change narratives that have been recorded so far. Last year, in Poland, a book was published, Poland, the Jews and the Holocaust, Promised Beginnings and Trouble Past by Mordecai Paldier, former department former head of the Department of the Righteous Among the Nations at Yad Vashem. Uh, he changed his mind about uh, the assessment of the Polish clergy. Uh, he says in the book, it's quite a lot of priests, nuns, and monks who were involved in helping Jews, especially Jewish children, at the same time running the risk of great danger. So, uh, actually, this is not the quote from the book by uh, Paul Diel. This uh, quote comes uh, from his own words uh, after the book was published. Anyway, the problem is this book may not attract too much attention, and also the author uh, doesn't provide full references and sources that he relies on. Now, where we are in our research today, still there are many details that are missing, certain links and relations are missing, so we don't put them in our book. The book is not exhaustive, of course, there are still many unused sources, many mainly testimonies in different languages that are scattered in archives across the world. and many extra uh, facts or cases were revealed after the book was published in the mid-2022. Just a few examples of such cases that we missed when working on the book. So recently I have visited uh, a website of Landmannschafts of uh, East Galicia. There is an account by Marcin Wilder uh, he talks about uh, November 1941 in the city of Stray. He speaks about uh, the Reverend Kolinowski, who saved this man by hiding him in a church. Well, this is all we know from this witness. Be there are no other testimonies from uh, this man, Marcin uh, Wilder. So far, we haven't found anything like this in the archives that we studied. Some church books uh, mention this uh, priest, uh, but his name is Kulinowski, not Kolinowski. Uh, also, the witness, Wilder, doesn't explain how he met the priest. His father was a, a power plant director and an officer of the Polish army executed in 1941 with other Polish officers. And there is no other trace 
in different publications about this rescue. Perhaps there are some traces in church archives. Uh, the rescuer, Father Kolinovsky, died in 1962. The same uh, story um, we know from the same place, Stray. Uh, in the book, we mention the Reverend uh, Alexander Chiswo, the local parish priest. According to two Jewish Testimonies, we know that the father um, provided uh, false documents to the family of his Jewish uh, friend and neighbor, Henrik Kronstein. Six people from this family uh, find shelter in Warsaw with new identities. And from the same town of Stry, Two school teachers, the Reverend Świerzawski and the Reverend Goleń, also produced some false documents for Jews. And these two priests are not mentioned in our book. So you can see now we have at least three more priests that we know by the name from Stry who helped Jews during the war, and they are not included in the book because we have learned about them recently. Another example. Two Jewish women, Maria Rosenblum and Halina Ellenborg, were detained at uh, the Pruszkov camp near Warsaw and later taken to uh, a concentration camp. They managed to escape from the train near Tomasz, um, Tomaszów Mazowiecki. Uh, some unidentified priests found them uh, injured and unconscious close to a railway track. He took them to a Polish family uh, to take care of them. Mm, the woman who was um, taking care of them also was detained and they met after the war in a camp that was liberated by the Allied army. So again, we don't know who this priest was and we don't know any testimonies of these two Jewish women from historical records. Another example um, shows that even the basic facts cannot be easily determined. And this is surprising because uh, the person who provided the testimony was a well-educated person a doctor of medicine who was just a teenager during the war. He gave an interview in 1992. This interview is in, um, uh, um, at, at Yale University Library. This uh, man's name is Julius uh, Ciemborniewicz. He uh, testified that he had been sheltered in a monastery near Krakow. He remembers his rescuers as very caring, very attentive. He was never forced to convert into Christianity or to take part in religious ceremonies. After the war, he reunited with his mother and brother. Although he was very mm, uh, grateful to the, the priests who saved him, he never had any contact with them. He didn't stay in touch with them after the war. And this is a very common situation. Many mm, of the saviors, mm, uh, of the survivors, uh, stop keeping in touch with the rescuers. So in our book, we, we, we mention that, uh, although we don't know precisely where it was. We just say a monastery near Krakow. But not far, not so long ago, we found some profile of this doctor at the main Jewish museum with some extra details. But we don't know whether there is another testimony by, the, by this doctor. He's dead already. Although in this um, uh, main Jewish museum, it says that the monastery where he was saved was by was run by the Salvatorian fathers. So we have established uh, this is 
the monastery of Salvatorian Fathers in the village of Zakshuvek near Krakow. Of course, another problem is that the monastery records don't mention any rescue effort during the war. And perhaps we should be looking for uh, some records, some facts in other church archives. That's why, again, this story is not included in the book because there are some gaps here. Again, maybe church archives might be helpful, but they need to be searched uh, through. And the very final thing is what else do we need to do? What about the future? Well, of course, there is a lot to be done because the book is, in a sense, work in progress. We need to elaborate on certain aspects, some entries in the book maybe need further elaboration. And it's clear that we cannot only rely on Polish and Jewish sources. Uh, otherwise, there is a risk we might miss some testimonies or some rescue cases. So uh, finally, this book is far from exhausting. We haven't included testimonies that were that had some gaps or missing information. There are many testimonies in uh, Hebrew and uh, Yiddish that need to be collected and studied, analyzed. As, as I said in the introduction to the book, we have uh, many photos of the members of the clergy rescuing uh, Jews. There might be uh, an interesting supplement to the second edition of the book. Uh, we would perhaps also add some maps showing areas, regions where rescue effort was uh, made. We would also include maybe um, references for online sources that could be also helpful. Thank you. Thank you very much, Council. And I'm sure that there are many questions. I have got uh, questions for each of the speakers of the authors. However, we do not have the time. This debate uh, will be taking place during the break. Uh, and at the conclusion, I would like to ask uh, Professor of Uber, the Center of the um, Jewish Catholic Relations uh, Center of uh, Joshua Heschel's name. Ladies and gentlemen, dear participants, dear guests, first of all, I would like to express my gratitude for your presence for very interesting presentations, for the testimony, for your knowledge, but also for the presence of the young people who are the recipients of this knowledge. I would like to uh, give my thanks to the author of the wartime rescue Jews uh, by Polish Catholic uh, clergy. The author of uh, who is the Richard Tinder and to Father Professor Zielinski. This book allows us to see the great people and the great behavior of the people of Polish clergy nuns, monks, who in those dark, dark times of the Nazi occupation were helping, risking their own lives. The horrible German occupation reversed the system of values. For German Nazis, killing was a good thing, and saving human life was a wrong thing to do. 
applying the so-called um, occupation laws, or being submitted to those laws, meant that you had to tell on your fellow citizens. You were obliged to tell on your fellow citizens. But can such law be actually called a law? How can you call killing millions of people using the whole government administration and under the law? On the 20th of uh, January 19, 42, for example, that happened close to uh, Berlin. The nations that were occupied, unfortunately, in those um, nations, the evil could spread. The more so the heroism of the people who were saving the ones who were condemned to non-existence was so important. It was the light and the darkness of the occupation. The Jewish nation was condemned for total extermination, for annihilation, for being wiped out of the map of the world. And Jews were our brothers, said John Paul II. John Paul II used to say, our Jewish older brothers in faith, they gave us the Decalogue, the Biblia, the Torah, the prophets. They were our neighbors, our fellow citizens, neighbors, brothers, the ones who built the Nazi regime, read Bible too. They knew who Jews were, but they were so blind they, in their greed for the power over other people. They rejected the Bible. They rejected the values. They rejected the Decalogue and condemned to extermination Jews. Occupation time revealed great behavior of the clergy who behaved Jews. Talmud says, when you save one life, you save the whole world. This behavior, these attitudes are worth getting familiar with and disseminating around the whole world the courage sacrifice, risking your own life. This conference tells us clearly that we still know very little about those heroes and the Jews they have saved. Jews who were saved, who could form their own families, live and tell us about they are rescuers who very often are anonymous. The Heschel Center at the Catholic University of Lublin aims at remembering their history, at showing those who remained pure at heart in those dark times. That's why we are trying to build a multimedia encyclopedia that it would be available online as a project of continuation as uh, uh, Council Richard Tinder said, to continue the work, to have it in the form of a multimedia encyclopedia. Thank you for your presence. And uh, as a gift to all, I would like to give you a bookmark and there is a code that will allow you to download through the open access this book. So we can we can take it. We can take it home and share this book among all the ones that you meet in your life. The book is in English, but I think soon it will be published in 
Polish, and we will be able to spread this knowledge in Poland, Europe, and all around the world. So once again, thank you. Let the heroic uh, behavior of nuns and priests be an inspiration to make today's world a better place. And let's say in our hearts the word of uh, hope we remember and we will keep remembering. Thank you very much. And just to conclude, I would like to thank the author, one of the co-authors of this uh, monograph exceptional monograph. I'd like to thank uh, the director of the Heschel Center who made this meeting possible. And thank you all for your participation, the discussion and exchange of views during the break to which you are kindly invited. Thank you.